Hi, this is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to Fridays with Sandy. We have a great candidate who's in California. Hi, all. <laughs> Her name is Joan. Uh, she went to a leading liberal arts uh, college in New England. Oh boy, here we go. Don't worry, we're not gonna we're not gonna breathe on you hard, Sandy. Open my spittle through the screen. <laughs> Uh, Joan is a psych major with a 3.64 GPA. Uh, she went to work for a FANG company in Silicon Valley in, the, in an HR, and she now is working for a leading design consultancy. Uh, she wants to broaden out and use the MBA to transition into a sort of management role in consulting where she would work on organizational design. Her GRE is 328. She has a good quant, given her psych background, uh, and in her aim is Stanford, Yale, Columbia, and Harvard. Sandy, that's okay. Good. Let's let's what do you just think? summarize that. We, we've got uh, this person from an unusual field who works for leading companies, and we've got a 700 GMAT equivalent with a verbal score of 97 and a quant of 97 percent and a quant score of 79%. So that that's solid. Okay, that's not going to keep her out. That doesn't have to be explained. On the other hand, part of the process of getting into some of her target school is a so called beauty contest and <laughs> scores are attractive, but they're not going to get you to the Miss America contest. <laughs> as it were. Could you tell us what your two jobs have been? type of company and what you've done? Yep, so first role um, was at a FANG company out in Silicon Valley, uh, worked as a staffing services associate or recruiting coordinator, um, goes by either title. Um, so working with helping along the hiring process from a process perspective, um, sort of facilitating candidate experiences, um, worked at several different, um, different groups within the FANG company, um, eventually working in sort of the R&D branch towards the end, got a lot of really great experiences there. Um, okay, but do people, do, do you have friends from that period who went on to get MBAs or is that not common? Um, not super common. Um, it, I know a couple of folks, but it's really just a handful. Right. Okay. And you stayed at company one for how long? A little over two years. Yeah. And, and, and then what's the difference between company one and company two? Is company two also a very classy company, just <laughs> smaller? Yeah, name brand, um, but not necessarily a tech company. So it's a design consultancy. Um, also, well, and they also do not send people to business school. Um, not in my specific department. No, not a lot of folks. So, John, here's a question for you. Do you think for the people on the admissions committee who, uh, do you think that they, they uh, would know these companies and their strengths? They would not only know these companies, uh, these companies are firms that their own MBA graduates would want to work in. All right, good. So, okay, great. And uh, both are highly selective, very difficult to get jobs in. Um, so, you know, they have that highly selective screen that business schools are looking for, as does Wellesley, obviously. Okay, so that's all good. So you've been through a lot of filters. Uh, yeah. Here's a tough question for you, John. Do you think uh, our applicant here needs to retake uh, the, uh, either the GRE or the GMAT? Like she's got a uh, 700 GMAT equivalent with a very high verbal 97, quant 79. Uh, let, let's say she got that up to uh, 730. Uh, which would obviously a lot of it would be in the quant part because the verbal part is kind of capped out. Yeah. I, I realize this is all cosmetics, but does that give her a, a little, uh, does that help? Well, uh, so on the overall, yeah, on the overall GRE score, she's two points below Stanford, one point below uh, Yale, two points above Harvard. So I think she's in the pocket, but I mean, if you wanted to take out an insurance policy, sure. You take the GRE one more time, and the truth is, the research shows that you will automatically do better on the second try. And so, yeah, how much did you how much did you study for the first time, particularly the quant part? Yeah, about three months. 
total for both. Yeah, so you, re so you studied, okay. You just didn't walk in there and say, bang. And the last I thing Joan it. wants to do is take this damn test again. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame her. Online version. Right. Of, I'm like, don't know what it's like in COVID times. <laughs> Although, okay. you know, GRE, you, you get a score you don't like, you cancel it, and no one sees it. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so give me a roadmap for uh, what you want to do after business school. What would your first job be, and then what would you, where, where would you want to be in 15 years? Yeah, um, so the role right after business school I'd be most interested in is in being an organizational designer. So being someone who can help organizations understand the current landscape of the organizations. In terms okay, of so is that, is that plausible? Do people who know your field say, yes, companies A, B, and C have organizational designers and they hire them from business school? Does it's that possible. happen? Yeah, possible. And I don't know too many organizational designers myself, so I only have a small data set of folks, but from <clears throat> I'm gathering, it seems possible. John, seems possible that you're an admissions director. You're going to hire someone who may not have a job. I mean, the admissions direct, the admissions people, they're, one of their major concerns is, can this person be employed after business school? Because we care about that statistic a lot, a lot, a lot. Yes. I, I think that she'd have no trouble. And not only that, but she wouldn't be in the crowd. You know, very few... MBA graduates want to go in human resources, which is basically the umbrella function uh, where organizational design sits. So that kind of makes, uh, takes her out of the big pile uh, and her experience at these two other companies with a, with a you know, world-class MBA would be an incredibly powerful combination for her yeah. to get. You think it makes sense to, job, just to be- Any job anywhere be, in any company. Yeah, are there consulting firms that specialize in this? Yeah, there are. Not many, but there are a few. Yeah. The one she so, worked for is- Here's some free advice. Uh, you, you might say, after business school, I'm very interested in HR, particularly this part of it. And I could either see returning to my current firm as a blah, blah, or joining uh, a specialized consulting company like A, B, and C. Just say that, even if you're not going to do it. It, it makes it sound like you're just not doing this to take a vacation from, you know. Is your firm going to sponsor you? No, Maybe. not the sponsorships. All right. But here's the deal. U ultimately, what you want to do is get the best out of human capital, period. Right? Correct. So that's, that's your overriding goal. And then, you know, your position is then beneath that. So you're really interested in human potential and getting the very best that people can offer, you know, fulfilling their full promise. Um, now, why, why, what, what makes you interested in that? What, is there a personal thing about this or a passion? Why? Yeah, well, I think in the current day and age, we know that there are so many folks who spend many hours at their job. Some people are really lucky and they get to work in their dream jobs, but that's not always the case. And in the companies I've been in, I've been really lucky where culture was a priority and getting to see sort of the difference between my um, experience in a company where culture is prioritized and human capital and purpose are prioritized versus- yeah. Hey John, how's that as an interview answer? I, I don't know, I like it. You know, I, Joan is <laughs> remarkably articulate. She really is. Very right, let, me just, let, me, let me disagree. I, that, that, that interview answer is just a bunch of words, really. I realize we're not doing a mock interview. Here, no, you you wanted to get straight to it. Okay. General, yeah, in in real language. I mean, you know, so here's what HR you is it? known for jargon. So you have to you have to become conversation. Here you go. Too many people are in jobs they don't like, mm -hmm. and therefore their potential is not fulfilled. I'm all about trying to get the best out of people in the best organizations possible. Oh, that was great. John, you want to do my interviews for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's, here's another interview question. It's like the first day of school, first day of class at a business school, and people are going around and briefly introducing themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, introduce yourself. Um, hi, I'm Joan. Um, I've been in the people business and realized that is my purpose in life, to keep being in the people business here at business school to understand the different layers of how I can continue um, helping folks maximize their potential in business context. 
That's beautiful. <laughs> trying to trying to make it snappy. <laughs> the, the typical way that unfolds is usually, hey, uh, I'm Joe Blow. I went to college at ABC University, and after college, I joined the uh, McKinsey for two years, and after that, I worked for the, uh, you know, Rock'em Sock'em private equity firm, and my interests are to be a private equity investor in mining and engineering. Wow. <laughs> That, that, that's just some advice to the folks out there. Yeah, that's simple. What, what could you contribute to your class? Yeah, um, so my work thus far, I've been in real work, real world context, understanding people um, and understanding how motivations, behaviors, incentives of people affect business. Um, and so what I can bring to the table is my understanding of people in general context that um, affect any business in this day and age. More specifically, what could what could you add? Mm. Well, if if there's you know, tell me cases where you could really uh, if there's a case about X, you could add Y. If the, if we were studying a case about you know uh, alpha, I could add not mm. not and not. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. Um, with businesses, one really important cost to think about is headcount, um, and so in coming years, you have to plan that out months in advance. So I've been in many conversations where we have to think about what is the cost and um, energy that's going to take time. Yeah, that's what you could add to a company that hired you. I'm interested in what you could add to your business school class. Mm. Um, I can bring in the knowledge of how people think about the people processes in their businesses and how that affects the bottom line and how that affects the decisions that relate to- Did you get involved in a lot of um, lawsuits? No, I did not. Some people oriented um, problem solving that had to happen, but not direct lawsuits. Yeah. John, what's what to answer the question for? What could she contribute to her business? The people dimension. I've worked in two highly selective companies, uh, and I've seen how they hire, who they hire, and what are the motivations for pulling the trigger on that. And then I've seen people placed in the in these companies who buy the performance. That's what she could add as an advisor to her fellow students. Yeah. But answer the if there's a case about X, I could help explain one, two, and three. Can you do it that way? Yeah. Joe Blow over there can do the finance. Uh, Mary can do the marketing. Yeah, I can yeah, do the people the, thing. Yeah. To, to, to <laughs> diss your fellow students. That's a very good <laughs> I don't mean to do that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. If, there, if there's a case about hiring discrimination, if there's a case about a merger and it involves corporate culture, if there's a case uh, 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 about uh, a takeover, uh, if, if there's a case about someone who, uh, you know, is trying to uh, expand a department. Th those are the kind of cases you, you know, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, that those are the kind of cases you would have special expertise. Got it. Those are great. Yeah. In the, that, that's really specific. And then you could take it out a, a, a layer and say, yeah, I, I deal with a lot of business personalities and, and conflict yeah. and fit. So are you thinking that Joan should retake the GRE? No. Okay. That's music to my ears. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, <laughs> I, I think on balance, no. It, it, you know, the, the answer is, should I, should I try and get a 730 from a 700 if it's at all possible? You studied a lot. You see, that's what's, this may be your score. Yeah, that's what, what I was sort of weighing. I'm trying to apply around one to a lot of these schools. I'm assuming yeah. with COVID, I didn't want, I, it's a gamble of do I spend those hours on the application or do I spend those hours sort of trying to get my score up by a few more points, so. Sure. Uh -huh. that, that's, that's not a fair way of presenting it as a choice, but uh, the decider might be you've, you've got the 364, so the what what you would add with a let's say a 730 gmat equivalent uh is cosmetic the schools looking you over are going to say 
even though she's in HR, which is not the birthing ground of Nobel Prize winners, uh, she can do the work here. Uh, <laughs> if you get my drift. Yeah, but that's also what makes her uh, more unusual and takes her out of the pile, you know, which is really powerful. Uh, you know, I, I wish I knew the answer. I wish I knew how many people at, at Harvard, Stanford, and Wharton uh, have HR have backgrounds. Do you have any idea now? You know, I don't know, but I doubt there are very many, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I, I think in general, I'm, now people are going to kill me for this, but I'm going to say a lot of HR people are not that intellectually ambitious. Yeah, and, and they're frequently, uh, while, 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 you're, while you begin to insult people, let me, let me really bring the insult. <laughs> people in HR are frequently kind of moms, or, or they, they're, they're women who then become moms and drop out of HR. And then- I I've been very lucky. Um, and I think part of the inspiration for why I'm really excited to do this work is the folks in the talent space that I've been around now, they seem to be folks who are really intellectually curious and hoping to push sort of the well, needle. Yeah, just on. what's the gender breakdown of the, all the HR people you've ever met in your life? Yeah, at the Fang company, it was actually pretty evenly split, about 50-50 in terms of gender. Um, granted, the company I'm at now, very female dominant, but before it was pretty evenly split. Okay. So what are her, what's her shot at Stanford? Why don't you give her some odds? Do you have any Stanford-y things that we haven't talked about? Like, oh, uh, like extracurriculars or? Overcoming yeah. adversity or helping, helping people victim, overcome adversity. Like yeah, um, I think in the work context, a lot of what I do, both in work and outside of my working hours, is related to DE&I work. Um, that contributes back to. Um, well, you've got the Race Affairs Committee here yeah. uh, uh, as a line on your resume. Yeah, that was really influential part of my time at one of the companies. Uh, man, that's very Stanford-y. Uh, and I probably I would, I would make as big a deal about that as you could within the bounds of your own personal ethics about being honest. Yeah, and <laughs> God, what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of subtext there, both of you. <laughs> no, I would make a big deal over that. Hey, you. Uh, Please, it's, you're going, as I often say, this is business school, it's not divinity school. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I mean, you know, puffing is part of business. Yeah. Yeah, I have it there because it was really something that really motivated me in the work I was doing, and it continues to do so. I would try and incorporate it as part of your story. Okay. Anywhere. I mean, all schools like. So what, are uh, the, uh, what do you say? Stanford's going to be hard. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's some X factor. Uh, and there isn't. So the, the, the numbers are a little, the standardized testing is off by a little. I don't know what, what they would say the resume value is here. You do work for leading companies. So. And she's a woman, and she has the perfect amount of experience, four years. Yep, yep, yep. And she's got all the scores are in line. And she'd have to make a perfect, it, it, it would be a perfect case. You, you really, it would be, uh, you, you, everything would have, you, you, every, a lot of things would have to fall into place. You'd have to come up with a story and deeply support it and try and show that you're, uh, very interested in overcoming adversity. That's your attraction to HR. One of the functions of HR is not only to hire people, but to, to deal with human relation problems after hires have been made. That's a deep motivation to you, helping, you know, companies, whatever their motto is. Uh, what's their motto, John? <laughs> Get the most from an inclusive, diverse workforce. No, no, save people, save the world. What, what is? It? Oh, you mean Stanford? Change, lives, yeah. change organizations, change the yeah. world. There yeah, you yeah, go. yeah. You got You got it. She's already there. That's true. <laughs> the dream of dreams. <laughs> uh, you, so you've Stanford, got to connect. Okay. Stanford got to connect accepts six percent. Only six percent of its applicants. What her shot is? What? Give her a percent. 20. Okay. 
That's more okay. than three times the accept rate at Stanford. How about Harvard? What do you think about Harvard? That's your favorite place, Stanford, well, it's, Andy. It's the same analysis. It's just bigger. That's all. So the odds go up to 30, 35%. The real question is, what are the odds of, at Harvard about, what are the odds about being interviewed? I think they're pretty darn high. You know, Harvard has this thing with Stanford. They want those California people to come, come yeah. to Boston. And the fact Boy, that I, you know, I, yeah, yeah, liberal uh, arts school helps. You know, I, I would focus on, I would really focus on HBS as your reach school. Oh, may I ask why? Be, well, it's bigger. Hmm. It's, you know, you, you know, people are usually not unhappy about having to go there. And if, if you put this thing in, if you sharpen this knife, by that I mean your whole story, if you really sharpened it, uh, you've got a lot going for you, particularly the HR part. That, that, could, get you, that could get you noticed out of a, people, a, a lot of people with a 3.6 and a 700. Awesome. That's great to hear. Thank you. How about Yale and Columbia? Yale, Yale might go for this. They would like it. Yeah, don't you think? Yeah, I think your chances at Yale are like 40, 50%. And Columbia, they might just swallow a little about the numbers, but they would like you too. It's a big city story. Yeah. So there you go. Awesome. Um, don't Got a lot going for you. As going through this, the details of your story, uh, it, 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 it's... It was more, it's more impressive to me than I, it was when I started this chat. There, everything is tight. It's a tight fit. And if yeah, you- Everything is linear here. Yeah, if you position yourself, HR person who can make a difference, and, and you've got a lot of evidence to do that, that, that becomes a powerful story. So. All right. Well, Joan, we think you're going to get into uh, a few of these places, we think. Oh, fingers uh, don't give up on Stanford. You know, one thing you might want to do is look for one of their experts in organizational design, meaning a faculty member, mm -hmm. and ask to have a chat with him or her uh, during this process, uh, just to talk about electives and how the curriculum could be shaped uh, for your for your goals and ideals. Yeah. Working for a, working for a classy design company is a real plus. Yeah, especially today. Uh, a well, you work for a classy, well-known design company, and uh, that, that's a real plus. Schools, yeah. I mean, schools relate to that, obviously. Joan, as pack do, your bags. As do we all. The only question is how far you have to travel. Yeah, right. Good, good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's anything related to COVID that I need to be aware of. I'm assuming application numbers are going to spike, but I didn't know if there's anything I really need to... Boy, I, I'll defer to John on this. Uh, only, only if it posed a particular challenge to you in your current job, and a challenge that was interesting and compelling uh, beyond obviously working remotely. You know, nobody knows what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, the school, I wouldn't worry so much you know. about it. It's it's, it's going to come out in an ed admissions interview. There'll be one one question about it probably. Well, the schools don't know themselves. Nobody knows. That's, that's yeah. what's um, distressing. That's one of the many things that are distressing. Nobody knows when they're going back to work. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Good luck to you, Joan. We're rooting for you. Oh, Andy, thank, you, thank you as always. I know when I'm John going back. John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Friday with Sandys. We'll see you next week.